So tell me, is your house a bug hub each year? Better check you don't have these unexpected items attracting insects to your home. White window and door frames. If the outside of your house is painted white, you might consider choosing colors like green and blue instead because they're less attractive to bugs. If mosquitoes are your problem, better keep the white paint because they like darker colors. Cardboard boxes. Cockroaches, silverfish, termites, and other bugs like to feed on cardboard boxes and the glue that binds them. This porous material is also perfect for them to live in because they can saturate it with their scent. That then attracts other insects because these little home invaders like to live in groups. So it's best to get rid of old cardboard boxes and, if possible, use plastic storage containers instead. Unfinished wood Carpenter bees love unfinished wood, especially if it has holes in it. They drill into the wood and lay eggs there. So make sure you don't keep stacks of firewood in or near your home, and check that your fence, deck, and house eaves are painted and treated. If you're not sure whether some wood furniture in your home, say kitchen cabinets or a table, is finished, grab a wet sponge and wipe it on the wood. If the wood soaks up the water and gets darker where you wiped, it's unfinished. Like my chores at home. High humidity. Pests love to set up camp in moist and warm places. You might find them in your basement, bathroom, or in the kitchen around the sink area. To control the humidity, make sure your drainage system is working correctly and that there aren't any leaks. You can also buy a humidistat to check the humidity levels in your home and install a dehumidifying system if needed. White light bulbs Bright white and bluish light is the most attractive to insects. Yellow, pink, and orange tone lights, not quite so much. Most LED bulbs are a good choice because the white light they produce isn't actually white, but a mixture of different colors. There are exceptions though, and some LED lights do attract bugs just as much as incandescent ones. So it's better to replace them with bulbs that put out warmer colors. Old books. Not just that, but any old paper can attract insects. That includes old books, stacks of newspapers, letters. Bugs like silverfish and cockroaches feed on the cellulose found in plants, and thus in paper too. That's why you shouldn't leave lots of paper on your table, shelves, or even in a drawer. If you don't want to get rid of those old books and letters, store them in a sealable plastic container. Plants Houseplants can attract bugs if you're not taking care of them properly. For example, if you're overwatering them, or if there's standing water in the saucer, it creates the perfect humid conditions for bugs to live in. Making sure that there's enough air movement in the room is also crucial. This will prevent high humidity, help the soil dry, and decrease fungal growth. Happy healthy plants and no more bugs. It's a win-win. Food and drinks. If you have overripe fruit or vegetables, throw them away or put them in a tightly sealed container because it's something flies like to feed on. Also, keep an eye on sweet or fermented liquids like soda, syrup, or vinegar. Wipe up any spills and don't leave cans and bottles open. Better yet, give them a good rinse when you're done with them. Okay, I'm done. Time to bug out. Meet A. I'm guessing from Canada, eh? (laughs) Just kidding. Now, A enjoys long walks on the beach. Oh, sorry, got the wrong script. Just a second. Let me find the correct one. Here it is. Meet A, still from Canada. A enjoys long walks down the chips aisles in the supermarket. Well, that's curious, but okay then. A also loves digging the internet to find out the original purposes of everyday objects. So let's get to it. Now, have you ever wondered what those square patches attached to certain models of backpacks are for? They may look aesthetically pleasing, but that's not their only function. Actually, these little patches, also known as lash tabs, pig snouts, and hauling loops, wow, were designed for people to hang any number of things on them. Say you're going camping, or better yet, glamping, and you take your backpack with you. Well, you can use the embroidered four-sided patch to hang on a pair of ropes, a hanger with your wet swimsuit during a hike, or you can even hang your shoes by the laces and carry them floppily around. Is that really a word? 
It is. The little holes on the sides of your shoes are not only there to reduce the smell of your feet sweat. (laughs) They were actually designed for people with narrower feet. This way, the shoelace can be tied passing through this hole and adjust better to more narrow feet. In any case, you can always try to pass your lace through there if you want to give an impression of having narrower feet. Now, back to A. It's time for A's favorite moment of the week, a trip to the supermarket to buy some potato chips. What, no poutine? If you've ever tried making crispy curved chips in your home oven, you probably had a confusing experience, to say the least. Even if we cut them extra thin, put the right amount of oil and the exact amount of salt, well, they still come out looking mushy, overbaked, and never, never shaped like Pringles. The truth is, it takes a little extra something to make chips exactly like the ones we buy in stores. According to chips experts, potato chip design was something that was carefully studied and researched before they achieve the ideal formula. For starters, that curvy shape we consciously and unconsciously associate with chips has an incredible scientific name, hyperbolic paraboloid. Uh, I came down with that once, but I took something and got better. <clears throat> this shape was believed to prevent some of the chip's biggest problems. First, they would break down into pieces once put into a bag, and second, they would become stale after a few days inside a packet. And this is where the famous curvy shape helps out. Cardboard boxes have waves inside their walls that give them the structure they need to carry heavy objects inside. We can notice a similar science in architecture, where domes and arches are used to provide strength and structure to a building. Well, this is exactly the mindset behind curvy chips. Speaking of chips, we're in a crunch here, so let's move on. Ah, permanent markers. As the name suggests, these are the type of markers that leave a permanent stain on whatever it is they touch. Say you used a permanent marker, thinking it was a regular marker, and you drew all over a whiteboard. No, that wasn't me. Really? Uh Uh-uh. Well, I didn't throw up. I mean, you don't need to throw the board out the window or into the nearest trash can there's still a way to salvage it. The ink is not that permanent after all. Get a normal marker and draw all over the traces of the permanent marker. You can create little circles around what you've previously drawn. No worries about ruining what you drew now. Let it sit for a while so that the ink of the impermanent marker blends in with the ink of the permanent one. It so happens that the normal marker's ink contains a solvent that dissolves the pigment from the permanent marker's ink. Now grab a paper towel, rub it off, and it's clean again! Have you ever noticed that most pieces of clothing you buy come with tiny patches of fabric and sometimes even a button or two? Well, the buttons we know are used to replace the ones that usually do fall off. Clumsy me. And the tiny patches can be used to fix up any rips or holes that we eventually make. These tiny patches of cloth also serve to test what kind of washing is more suitable for that specific piece of clothing. Most sports courts in the US have a tiny little door on one of their sides. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but one thing's for sure – it's too small for a regular-sized human. And we don't often see pets coming in and out of there either. It turns out that these doors were designed for the caretakers of the court. This way, anything that is swiped off the court's floor can be easily disposed of without having to cross the entire court to reach the entrance. Ah, batteries. Most of us spend hours trying to figure out if they still have any juice in them or not. And if the putting it on the remote and seeing if the TV turns on trick isn't working for you anymore, try this. Grab several batteries and drop them on a smooth surface from a relatively short height. Pay close attention to which batteries will bounce and which ones will not. It is important that you drop them in an upright position. Now, if there still is some juice left, the battery shouldn't bounce as much since it will still be a little heavy. If it bounces too much, you already know it's empty or depleted. 
And what about those classic salt and pepper containers we see at least once a day every day? In restaurants, diners, and our grandma's house. It's usually difficult to get the content out of them, and yet people still love to keep them around. Next time, instead of shaking your entire arm really hard to try and get some salt out of the container, try rubbing the bottom of one container with the bottom of the other one. Grab the salt, for instance, hold it with the bottom downwards. Now, with the pepper shaker in an upright position, rub the two bottoms together, creating circular friction between them. The salt will flow out of the shaker effortlessly. Amazing, right? Now, have you ever noticed how sometimes the signal blinker inside your car starts blinking hectically? No, it's not a design error. In case this happens, make sure to check your bulbs. Maybe one of them is burnt, and your car is just trying to call your attention to this fact. Make sure you do this before you're pulled over in the middle of the night and have to pay that huge fine. Ooh, did you know that the little flaps on each side of the top of the juice box are there for a very specific purpose? They were actually designed to hold the boxes. This way, they would avoid overall squeezing and making a mess on the lunch table. Now, think of that hot summer day. After spending the day in the sea or immersed in your backyard pool, you are in dire need of a refreshing drink. If you kept any mason jars hidden in your cupboards, now is the time to take them out. If you own a blender with a screw on the bottom, this will work out just fine. Pro tip for you! Mason jars can actually be screwed onto your blender. So this way, you can mix that delicious fruit juice or smoothie directly into your mason jar. For this, you'd have to take the blender's mouth out and then screw it directly into the mason jar before screwing it into your blender. Now press the smoothie function and enjoy all those nutrients. Some plastic milk cartons have an indentation on them that is sort of an upgrade from the traditional paper cartons. This circular indentation near the base is there for a reason. Oh my, what could that be? Well, firstly, the indentation will pop outwards in case the milk has gone bad. So no more drinking spoiled milk for you. Secondly, if you drop the milk on the floor, it will help to absorb some impact, reducing the risk of the bottle bursting open. Neat, right? Well, well, that's all I've got for this one. I do recommend you give these a try and tell us all about it in the comments below. Why is the myth dogs are colorblind so widely accepted? They do see colors, even though they have a more limited spectrum than we do. They see blue, yellow, and violet pretty well, but it's hard for them to tell the difference between orange, red, and green. So, if you want to redecorate your dog's house, maybe you should stick to purple and blue shades. Animals, plants, and humans were all actually connected and have common traits because we've all evolved from the same micro-ancestor. This would be our planet's original ancestor, LUCA. This stands for the last universal common ancestor, which is a 3.8 billion year old organism. Closing the eyes can improve your memory. Let's say you want to listen to a story and see how much you can remember. Studies show that if you close your eyes and take a 15 minute rest, you'll remember it better. A good technique for when you're studying or trying to remember some boring information. The pink corner of your eye is actually the remnant of the third eyelid. We all have this mysterious membrane. The third eyelid is way more prominent in certain mammals and birds since it protects their eyes from dust. But for humans, this tissue doesn't have any particular meaning, so scientists believe we'll eventually lose it. When potatoes are exposed to too much light, they mostly turn green, whether they're in a factory, storage, or a field. This happens because they start to form chlorophyll, a pigment that gives plants green color. So when you see green potato chips, it means they were made from one of these potatoes that were exposed to light for a longer time. But just because some green potato chips made it into the bag doesn't mean you should eat them. As it turns out, the green areas on potatoes and on chips are not good for you. Nothing's going to happen if you eat one or two of these green potato chips. But if you eat too much of a green potato, you might experience some discomfort. Despite their name, some oranges are not orange. 
Some initially contain large amounts of chlorophyll, which makes this citrus green-colored in the first place. As it matures and ripens, the chlorophyll slowly disappears as the fruit is exposed to cool temperatures. That's when it gets its color. But this is also why, in warm areas across the world, oranges remain green. If you've ordered something small from Amazon, like a pen, a single book, or something else, you might have got it in a box that seemed way too big for your item. And it's not an accident, nor random. It's because of their complex shipping algorithm. It takes into account the size of other packages going to the same place, as well as the size of the shipping vehicle. The small item gets a box size that will fit the space inside the vehicle together with other packages and keep boxes from sliding around. Physicist and inventor Percy Spencer discovered microwaves by accident. He was building a magnetron for some of his radar equipment. At one moment, he realized the chocolate bar he had been keeping in his pocket had begun to melt. He was curious about what was going to happen next, so he directed microwaves at eggs, which exploded, and popcorn, which popped. This is how he discovered a great tool to heat food that uses less energy than a conventional oven. In its original version, the clay-like substance we call Play-Doh today was a wallpaper cleaner. It was invented and sold for the purpose of lifting soot off of wallpaper. At the time it first showed on the market, you could only get it in an off-white color. But later, they started selling it as a toy. The substance was produced in yellow, blue, and red. Today, you can get it in more than 50 colors. Bubble wrap had a somewhat different purpose at its beginning. It was supposed to be wallpaper. In the 1950s, when it first showed up, two engineers decided to glue two shower curtains together. That's how they trapped small bubbles of air between them. They were trying to create some sort of textured wallpaper, but it didn't take off. A couple years later, IBM had to ship some data processors and needed something to protect them, which is when the phenomenon of bubble wrap came up. One study showed that one minute of popping bubble wrap is as calming as a 30-minute massage. Why don't electric fans cool the air? You could set a thermometer in front of it and choose a turbo mode. But the temperature won't go down. In fact, the temperature might even go up if you leave the thermometer next to the working parts thanks to the electric current. A fan won't cool the air, but it will cool you or any other object with water inside. An electric fan improves air circulation in a closed space. Plus, it speeds up evaporation which makes liquids, including the sweat on your skin, a bit cooler. Have you noticed pen caps have tiny holes on the top? It seems random at first, but it's actually a lifesaver. If you can accidentally swallow this cap, the hole ensures you can continue breathing because the cap won't completely block the airway. If you take a closer look at the night sky, you'll see stars come in different shapes and sizes. White is the most prevalent color, true but they sparkle in shades of red, blue, and yellow too. But you won't see a green star. It's not that stars don't emit green light, it's just that our eyes don't see it like that. Stars vary in colors when they burn at different temperatures. The hottest stars appear blue, while the coolest stars seem to burn in red hues, but they all shine in multiple colors. They emit different light wavelengths that represent various parts of the color spectrum. We can't all perceive those wavelengths separately. We only see the dominant light wavelength, which means the dominant color. So, stars of medium heat emit green photons in most cases, but they just don't appear green. When we try to process something that generates red, green, blue, and yellow photons at once, our eyes see it as white. That's the same reason why mid-temperature stars such as our sun appear white to us. Why do we blink? to moisten and cleanse the eye, that's for sure. Every time you close your eyelids, the tear glands secrete a salty substance that sweeps over the surface of your eye. It then flushes away all those tiny dust particles and also lubricates the exposed parts of your eyeball. We usually blink every four to six seconds unless the eyes are more irritated. Then we blink more frequently to keep them moist and clean. But not just that, blinking also helps our brain to reset it has to process so many things all the time, so it's fair to give it a break from time to time. So blinking rescues our brain around 15 to 20 times per minute. 
When we shut our eyes, we help our brain to power down and take a very short but still effective mental break. That's why we blink more when we're in the middle of a task that demands some serious mental activity. Why do we have nails? They're generally made of a specific type of protein you can find in fur, hair, claws, and hooves. It's called keratin, and unlike claws, nails are flat and wide, so they're more effective at shielding the tips of toes and fingers from potential injuries. Fingernails not only protect sensitive areas but also provide a rigid backing so you can take and separate small objects more easily. How would you pick up a single jigsaw piece or peel a sticker from its backing without nails? It would be almost impossible without additional tools. Apes and monkeys use their feet for such delicate tasks too. Primates have probably evolved nails because they needed help with simple tasks such as grasping branches tightly and removing ticks. Raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, and cherries are not berries. To classify a berry, they have to have three layers. A protective outer one, a fleshy one in the middle, and finally, an inner part where you can find the seeds. Also, a plant must come from a flower with just one ovary and have two or more seeds. So, by this criteria, cranberries and blueberries are berries. Together with some more plants, you wouldn't expect to be in this category. Kiwis, bananas, watermelons, tomatoes, eggplants, and even peppers. You've probably heard your ears and nose are those body parts that never stop growing. This happens because the effects of skin changes and gravity. Other parts of your body change in the same ways, but you can't see it as well as you can see what's happening with your nose and ears. Braces for dogs, unimaginably colorful shrimps, fireworks spitting fish, the animal kingdom is full of surprises that prove that nature has the most inventive mind. A single strand of hair can hold up to three ounces, meaning, theoretically, all the hair on your head could hold the weight of two full-grown elephants. Some snails can sleep for up to three years, but they usually get in 13 to 15 hour snoozes and wake up with a 30 hour boost of energy. Periodical cicadas come out of their underground shelters every 13 or 17 years. This is a biological adaptation so that no other animal can depend on them as a food source. Most animals' lifespans are shorter. Scientists theorize that early humans lost their fur so they wouldn't overheat while hunting. We instead evolved to store fat to keep warm, which is why your head is covered in long, thick hair. There's no fat on your scalp. Dogs can wear braces to fix their teeth, just like humans. And you might not believe it, but this invention has existed for over 30 years now. Dogs can also have dental fillings if they chipped one of their teeth in case of cavities and crowns. The smallest monkey in the world, the pygmy marmoset, could hug your thumb like a tree trunk. Owls are the birds able to see the color blue, and they don't exactly have eyeballs like humans. Theirs are more like eye tubes, since they can't move inside the eye socket like your eyes. An owl must rotate its whole head. Butterflies feel smells with their feet, snakes with their tongues, and octopuses with their arms. Blind mole rats live underground and send each other information by banging their heads on the tunnel walls. Reindeers change their eye color depending on the season. Their eyes are gold in the summer and blue in the winter. Bees show the location of pollen source to other bees with a waggle dance. The fastest registered human punch is 45 miles per hour. A mantis shrimp strikes at 50 miles per hour. These creatures also have 16 light sensitive cones in their eyes against our three. And thanks to that, they can see colors unimaginable for us humans. They're very colorful too, even to our eyes, and how they see each other is beyond our wildest fantasies. Pistol shrimps, however, beat their relatives in power because they close their big right claw with such speed that it creates a white hot air bubble underwater, and it's literally hot. The temperature of this tiny bubble momentarily reaches almost that of the surface of the sun. The oldest tree we know is called Methuselah. It's 4,700 years old. This thing was a sapling in the 27th century BCE. 
Dolphins sleep with one half of their brain resting while the other remains alert. Horses have one heart like you and me, but they have a heart-like organ at the bottom of each foot called a frog. It pumps blood up the leg every time the horse stands on it. Many types of seahorses are similar to chameleons, not only because of their ability to change color, but also in that their two eyes move independently from each other. Some seahorses can't change color at will, but they're born with color to blend with their habitat. For example, red for coral or green for algae. Baby flamingos are grayish white. Algae and seafood they feed on contains a substance called carotenoids. And thanks to it, over time, flamingos acquire pink plumage. It's the same substance that's present in carrots, and your skin can turn orange too if you eat too much of it. The black and white color of a zebra doesn't help it hide from predators. What it does is help avoid bites from dangerous insects, such as tsetse fly. A fly sees a zebra, but when approaching, it flies by or crashes into the animal and bounces off. Nobody knows exactly why this happens. One theory says that the black and white coat of a zebra creates an optical illusion that confuses insects. Thanks to their tallness and good eyesight, giraffes can see danger approaching from afar. Their head is like a watchtower, and they warn each other of the threat in a very unusual way, with the help of their low humming sound. Seagulls can drink salt water. There are salt-secreting glands near their eyes. These glands purify seawater very quickly and the salty residue that comes out through the nostrils. Perhaps the most impossible creature in the world is a jellyfish. It doesn't have any sensory organs we're used to, like eyes, ears, and nose. It has no skeleton, but most importantly, it hasn't got a brain or a heart. Its body is almost entirely made of water. That's why if you take a jellyfish out of the sea and put it on the shore, it will soon melt. At the same time, there's a species of jellyfish that can live forever in a safe environment. Horseshoe crabs have two eyes on the sides of their head, five more on top of their shell, two near their mouth, and one on the tail. The latter is used as a photoreceptor. It catches the sunlight and tells the crab if it's day or night outside. Hippos don't get their skin burned in the blazing sun because they produce their own sunscreen. It's kind of pink sweat that covers their whole body. Kangaroo rats can go without water for years and sometimes even throughout their entire lives. They live in extremely arid deserts and get all the water they need from the seeds and plants they feed on. Plumed basilisk lizards have an uncanny ability to run on water. First, their hind feet are equipped with long toes with fringes of skin that can spread out in the water. As a result, a bigger surface of the lizard's foot comes into contact with the water. Then it pumps its legs incredibly fast when it runs on water. This creates little pockets of air that prevent the animal from drowning by keeping it on the surface. The cardinal fish has been called firework spitting for a reason. When this little critter guzzles too many ostracods, a type of zooplankton, the tiny creatures start to glow inside the fish's body due to their bioluminescence. As a result, the cardinal fish becomes more visible, exposing it to predators. That's why the fish spits the ostracods out, which looks like it breathes outbursts of bluish fire. Opossums are immune to snake venom. The secret is a peptide that helps these critters neutralize dangerous chemicals. This is why snakes are a favorite treat on a possum's diet. Meerkats have dark patches around their eyes, but these black circles aren't just there to make the critters more adorable. They also function as built-in sunglasses. The dark fur on the patches blocks the blazing sun, so meerkats can gaze directly at the sky. On top of that, the sentry, a meerkat that watches out for birds and other predators, can easily see danger and alert its mates. Salmon are skilled navigators who could put most drivers to shame. However, this competition wouldn't be fair. After all, salmon can sense the planet's magnetic field and use this knowledge if they get lost. Dingoes have rotating wrists, just like humans. 
This helps them climb trees, use their paws like hands to catch food, and even open doors. Sponge crabs are the icons of style in the animal kingdom. They dig and cut into sea sponges to make their very own hats. The purpose of this hat is protective, though. Sponge crabs use them to hide from predators and protect themselves against bites. Flying squirrels glow under UV light, emitting pink light. It happens because they can absorb light and emit it back in another wavelength. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. So grocery carts have loops for a reason. You don't want to put your jacket in your cart next to a bunch of potatoes and onions, do you? Hang it on the loop instead. It's there to help you organize your cart better. Carts also have a cool section at the bottom. Whenever your cart's full, just lift it up and attach a shopping basket for extra purchases. Lift up the whole metal thing, sit your basket on the horizontal bar above the wheels, and secure it with those handy hooks. If you've got some pesky parsley stuck in your teeth, try this tip. It can be hard to get it all out with loose floss. You need more tension. Just tie it in a knot. Toothpaste stripes may seem a bit weird. It's just a marketing trick. Back in the 70s, a leading toothpaste brand added a blue stripe to show that their toothpaste had double action. Solid white toothpaste worked just as well. But those blue bristles on your toothbrush actually make sense. They gradually lose their color over time. When the blue's faded, it's time to change your toothbrush. Ever notice that tiny hole on the bottom of a padlock? Its hidden purpose is to drain water out to keep it from rusting. It's also the place to lubricate a padlock. A drop of oil in there will make it open and close way easier. Those ridges on the edge of dimes aren't just for show. People used to shave off the edges, then melt the edges down into new coins. But thanks to the new design, it's easy to tell if someone's been shaving the edges off. If you still struggle with peeling an orange, here's another way of opening it. First, cut off the top and bottom. Make a slit on the side and pull it open. That knobbly bit sticking out of the cap of your favorite cream is there for a reason. These tubes are usually sealed with foil. So unless you love breaking your nails trying to open them, just flip the cap over and push. The tiny rubber disc under every bottle cap isn't just for seeing if you want a lifetime supply of soda. It's what keeps your drink all nice and bubbly. The lid keeps the liquid inside. The rubber disc keeps the gas inside. Until you drink it. <laughs> if you use the blue side of your eraser to erase pen, your notebooks are probably all full of holes. The blue side's there for when you need to erase something on much thicker paper. It works on pencil and even ink, as long as the paper's thick enough. Your bobby pins might not stay in place if the grooves aren't facing the right way. They should always be on the bottom, close to your head. Still coming loose? Put a squeeze of hairspray right onto the bobby pin before you put it in your hair. Many glass bottles usually have some sort of indent at the bottom. It's handy if you want to be fancy. Put your thumb in the indent and pour away. The technical name for this little dude is a punt. Those sugar sticks at your local coffee stand are ready to be opened in a new and easier way. Look how happy they are! Try splitting it right down the middle. No more sugar on your fingers. No more tiny little paper bit. Even your coffee's happier. Your cotton rounds pack has those strings on it, so you can hang it on a handy hook in the bathroom. But there's no need to loosen and tighten back up again every time. Check out the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear it open carefully, and you're good to go. Doorknobs are usually made of brass, bronze, or some other copper alloy. Why? They're antibacterial, so they stop microbes from spreading. Just a couple of hours, and the pesky microbes are gone. But don't forget to wash your hands anyway. Bottles have long necks for a reason. Hold the neck, not the bottle, if you want to enjoy a cold drink. Two zips too much? Maybe, but they come in handy as a clever anti-theft device. 
just lock them together. Now, no one can open your backpack. Don't have a lock on you? You can also tie them together with some string or even just a paper clip. Anything to slow those pickpockets down. That tiny little button on the back of a shirt collar is used to hold your tie in place. You don't want your tie trying to escape back there. Shoe manufacturers care about their customers. So most running shoes now have a special anti-blister system pre-installed. Hmm. Sounds intense, but it's basically just that extra hole on top of your sneakers. Make a loop with the extra hole, inserting the lace backwards. Cross your laces and put them through the loops. Now pull the laces down to lock your foot in place. Now run! You'll find silica gel packets when you buy bags, shoes, even some snacks. Don't throw them away! They soak up excess moisture, so any times your shoes are a bit damp, chuck a few gel packets in there overnight. You might have been using your shampoo wrong this whole time. Really? Here's the gist. Don't apply it to your hair. Just apply it to the roots. The foam you create will trickle down on your hair anyway. Notebook margins aren't for taking extra notes or practicing emojis. They were invented to protect people's work. People used to live with a lot of hungry rats around. The rats would nibble at the paper, eating people's work. They put the margin lines there to let people know to start their writing further from the edge so it's not lost to a hungry rodent. Solo cups are the key element for any barbecue party. But these red cups are even cooler than you thought. You can use them to measure liquids. The bottom line equals 1 ounce, the second line equals 5 ounces, and the third line equals 12 ounces. If you like milk on your tea, try this tip out next time. Pour it from the other side of the carton. It sloshes around less, and it's easier to control. Car headrests are all about comfort, and detachable headrests are all about safety. If you pull the headrest out, you'll see two sturdy metal bars. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can use the bars to smash the window and get out. Women's shirts have their buttons on the left, even though about 85% of people are right-handed. It would make way more sense to have them on the right. The thing is, back in the day, wealthy women had maids to help them dress. So for them, the buttons on the left made things much easier, don't you know? The tab on your rearview mirror does have a real function, people. It holds your air freshener, your huge fuzzy dice, maybe a big smiley emoji. But it's actually a switch between day and night mode for your mirror. When it's dark out, the night mode blocks the glare from the car behind you. The McFlurry spoon has a square handle on it. It gets attached directly to the ice cream machine, and the ice cream and toppings get mixed in together, right in your cup. It saves the employees loads of time, plus it saves water because they don't have to wash the machine after each one. Wooden hangers are so hot right now, they could burn up your clothes. Nah, not really, but they look better and are more natural. But there's another reason to use them. They're made of cedar, which is a natural moth repellent. Bonus tip? Add some dry orange peel to your closet. No moth is ever going in there again. This is the right way to use a hairbrush. Don't use it horizontally. Hold it in a vertical position. The bristles are lined up vertically. If you hold the comb horizontally, then these bristles begin to bend. You can check it yourself and feel how convenient it is this way. You enter the room and take off your sunglasses. Where are you going to hide them? Are you going to hold them in your hand or hang the glasses on your shirt collar? Or maybe put them in your pocket? The best way is to put the glasses in the breast pocket so the lenses look inside and only one temple sticks out. Your glasses will be protected from damage this way. According to the rules of etiquette, you must always let out those who are leaving the room, building, or elevator first, only then enter. This simple rule helps to avoid collisions and awkward situations. Do you have paint rollers in your house? Let's say you're doing repairs and painting walls. See how a thick layer of paint gets on the roller? People clean it in different ways. Someone washes it off with water or scrapes the paint off with a knife or paper. 
But there is an easier way. You can buy special squeegees for paint rollers. Their blade shape fits the roller perfectly and scrapes off all the dirt. Toothpicks are always on the table at restaurants and cafes. People use them incorrectly when picking their teeth with them after eating. The correct and cultured way is to go into the restroom and carefully pull out all the food. You don't have to tear off the cover layer from the dishwasher tablet. This layer is tiny. Just put it in the tank and the water will dissolve the cover. You know this feeling of happiness when you're hungry and find some pizza in the fridge? How are you going to reheat it? You can use a microwave or an oven, but there is a great alternative way. Heat a frying pan and put a piece of pizza on the side of it. Add a little water to the opposite side, then cover the pan with a lid or foil. Be careful here. After a couple of minutes, take it out and taste the pizza. It's perfect, right? Don't brush your teeth with an electric toothbrush using fast movements. This device should move back and forth smoothly. These shoulder straps with buttons on your jacket have a purpose. They were invented to keep your backpack straps tightly on your shoulders, preventing them from slipping off. Try it yourself. Unhook the straps, put on the backpack, and attach them back. Keep the box with the hole up when you're pouring juice or milk out of it. Then, there will be less splashing. Always put the toilet lid down before flushing it. Small, imperceptible particles of dirty water splash and pollute the entire space when you keep it open. Many people have a seasoning shaker in their kitchen, and most just shake it to pour spices on food. If you are one of them, stop right there. Just flip it over and scroll the top cover with holes. Spices will easily fall out without any obstacles. Do you have bad breath? How are you going to check it? You can breathe on the palm and feel it, but this method is not effective. It's much better to lick your wrist. Don't touch it with the tongue tip. Lick it with the middle part. Smell it and yeah, that's what people get when you're talking to them. One of the ways to keep your breath fresh is to stay silent. When you talk a lot, your mouth dries up. Without moistening with saliva, many bacteria accumulate in it. And this is what gives you bad breath. There's an empty space between the panes and the oven door. You can stick a brush in there to clean the window. The entrance to this space is at the bottom of the door. Open the lower shelf, then push the brush through the hole. There are many ways to separate the yolk from the white in a raw egg. You can use special spoons or do it with a bottle. Someone slowly pours egg white from the shell. None of the methods are easy, especially if you're doing it for the first time. But you can extract the yolk much more efficiently without using any additional equipment. Just pour the raw egg onto a plate and take out the yolk with your own hands. But before that, oil your fingers with garlic. Did you know that it's better to wash the rice in cold water before cooking it? Water helps to separate the dry grains from each other. During cooking, the washed rice grains don't stick together. This makes the rice fluffy and delicious. The easiest way to peel garlic is to put it in the microwave. Cut off the tip and leave it in the microwave for 20 to 30 seconds. Done! You can peel it easily now. Do you know how to properly open a pack of spaghetti? Take it with both hands. Hold it upright and hit the bottom part against the table. Don't be afraid to use force. The lower side of the pack should evenly touch the table surface. A slight deviation can damage your spaghetti. You can also open it by strongly slapping its back with your palm. But this option requires more practice. It turns out that you don't really have to wrap your suitcase with a protective plastic film while traveling. You can use a t-shirt instead. Just put your clothes on your suitcase as a cover. And don't waste your time and money wrapping it in plastic. Here's the right way to tie a garbage bag to get rid of the hole in the middle. Don't tie these thin straps together. Hold them to the top. Make a knot and wrap the knot through the loop. Now you have a good tight seal here. Here's the best way to open a bag of chips at a party. Put the bag horizontally. Fold two corners on the same side and roll this side inside a little bit. Put the bag with this rolled side on the table and open the top. Your ceiling fan has two modes of operation. 
the winter and the summer one. You need to find the switch to change between them. Switch it up to activate the winter mode and the fan will pull the air up. Turn on the summer mode and the fan will push the air down to cool the room. If you're afraid of losing your luggage at the airport, here's a great way to avoid it. You need to take a picture of your suitcase in advance to show it to the airport staff later. You can also buy a special GPS tracker and put it in your bag. It can work for six days. You can use your phone to locate your luggage wherever it is. The extra space under your oven is not only for keeping your frying pans and pots. You can put dishes with food in there. The oven heat will keep the food warm. It's helpful if you're waiting for guests and they're late. Don't tuck the bathrobe belt behind the back. Pull it out and thread it through loops on the side of your stomach. After that, tie the belt as you like. The robe will fit tightly to the body. You get a hot pack of popcorn out of the microwave and feel that small unpopped grains are in there. You can get rid of them before you open the box. See that tiny hole in the top? Shake it over a plate and all the grains will fall through it. Have you ever found pieces of fabric coming with new clothes? They're not patches. These are the first test subjects before cleaning. You can put this piece in the washing machine and see what will happen to it. If everything's okay, you can safely wash your clothes. Here's an easy way to peel an orange. Just cut off its top and bottom and make an incision down to the middle. Now unroll the fruit. You can open cardboard containers with Chinese food by expanding paper walls and using them as a plate. This way, you'll get more space and cool down your food faster. So, you hungry, but not quite ready to eat a three-course meal just yet? How about some instant noodles instead? Ah, the water's boiled, your tummy's rumbling, but there's a problem. The styrofoam cup's broken and the noodles are exposed. Wait, is that a space at the bottom of the cup? Why? That space is for protecting the noodles. It's not the company trying to save money or anything. Notice how the ramen in cups is hardly ever broken, but the one in the packet comes out looking like a mess? This technique is called a middle suspension. The noodles are packed in tightly to stop them from getting crushed in the delivery truck. It's not just about the noodles looking nice and long. It also helps those tasty noodles soften more easily. Now, morning breath isn't the best. Luckily, there's an easy way to get rid of it. Yeah, it would have been easy to think that mouthwash was invented for, you know, washing your mouth. Well, mouthwash was originally invented and sold as a floor cleaner. It was sold to hospitals as an antiseptic for years. It never really took off. Some genius in marketing rebranded it as a mouthwash, and the rest is minty fresh history. So, after you've cleaned your teeth, just remember, rebranding can be pretty powerful. It's hard to imagine a world without the internet these days. No streaming, no online games, or pictures of cute little kitties. Yeah, that's not what it was designed for, but who cares, right? The prototype internet was called ARPANET, or the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. This machine was very sensitive. To stop anyone from turning it off, some clever scientists stuck a piece of paper on it with these powerful words. This machine is a server. Do not power it down. It was written in red ink. Hey, nice touch! Having your professor scribbling in the margins of your notebook isn't exactly new. Except that margins weren't designed for that. They're rat protection. Back in the day, rats would nibble on paper all the time. So if you wrote something on the edge of the paper, it ended up inside a hungry rat. A couple of well-placed lines stopped your best answers from getting eaten. Hey, I can't finish this pizza. Time to cover up those leftovers. Luckily, I have plenty of plastic wrap. A little tug, and the roll just jumped out. Prison break! If you look at the wrap's home, the long, thin box, there's a special little feature that can help you. A cardboard tab on each end. Push them in, and the roll's not going anywhere. Strange that I've never seen them before. It's lunchtime. I'm feeling like a California roll today. Seaweed, rice, cucumber, avocado, and crab meat. Or is it? It's actually imitation crab meat. 
It's basically cheap white fish blended with sugar. The fish mixture is then heated and pressed into shape. Mmm, yummy! That's maybe why it's called the hot dog of the sea. Nah, I just made that up. Your microwave has a secret we've all seen but never paid attention to. That black mesh you see on the door is a Faraday cage. It stops the electromagnetic energy, or the microwaves, from escaping. And cooking you, too. (laughs) That's how it heats up your food so quickly. Every microwave has to have one, and they all vary in quality. This Faraday cage can even stop signals from your phone, which I guess is useful. Hey, you don't need your popcorn to stop popping in order to take a call, do you? Airplane mode's a bit easier, though. Ever taken an IQ test and realized you're Einstein-level smart? Me, neither. The median IQ is only 100. Plus, there's very little evidence that Einstein ever even took the test. In the beginning, most people thought the tests were too vague to be helpful in any way. The test was designed for children who needed help with their studies. Later, they realized it could be adapted to identify intelligence. But it was never originally designed for that. Hey, never pop bubble wrap, you're missing out. And you guessed it, it was never meant to be popped or used in the way we use it today. It was invented as a new textured wallpaper. By sealing two shower curtains together, they created the first bubbles. The idea never really took off, obviously. After failing as wallpaper, it discovered its true meaning in life. It could protect sensitive items. When the first computers were being shipped, bubble wrap was there to help. Imagine a house with bubble wrap wallpaper in every room. Best or worst thing ever? Hey, leave me a comment below. If you owned one of the biggest companies in the world, selling one of the most known products on the planet, how would you keep your company's secret a secret? The formula for Coca-Cola isn't patented. The first recipe was, but when they made changes, no patent ever went through. The secret formula is still only known by a few people at the company. Not only that, but not even Coca-Cola's rival wants the recipe. In 2006, a disgruntled employee tried to sell off the secret, but it didn't work. Hey, take a look at your brand new mattress. Do you see the do not remove under penalty of law tag? Wow, that thing looks pretty serious. Good news though, the tags aren't meant for you. They're aimed at the mattress seller. A hundred years ago, mattress makers used to create the filling with basically anything. Animal hair, old hospital beds, or clothing. Then, strict laws stopped old hospital beds from being used. Their mattresses were filled with germs. Now, on a rainy day, Play-Doh is something everyone can make at home. Mash up some flour, water, salt, food coloring, and wham! Any creative person is amused for hours. Cheap, clean, non-toxic, the perfect modeling clay. But it was never made for that. This stuff was originally for cleaning up walls in the 1930s. That's because people started going crazy for wallpaper, which you couldn't use soap and water on. Eventually, Play-Doh had to find a new home. Now, have you ever finished a lollipop and noticed a hole in the stick? This hole isn't just for show or to make a musical instrument with after you're done. It's there to keep that tasty sweet treat from falling off. While the candy's still hot, it's poured into a mold. As it hardens, the candy flows into the hole and creates an anchor. Oh, not into lollipops? How about good old American gummy bears? Unfortunately, they aren't American at all. They're German. A German company started making them in 1922. The original name was uh, Gummy something something. Anyway, they got the inspiration from real dancing bears at live shows. These treats eventually made it all the way around the world. Hey, ever wondered what those little bumps were for on the F and J keys on your keyboard? These little raised ridges are to help your index fingers be in the best possible spot for lightning-fast typing. Keeping those fingers on F and J, it makes it way easier to reach all the keys, especially if you don't look at the keyboard. Now, everybody loves a slinky. If you've ever watched one of them strut down the stairs with groovy music in the background, congrats, you're definitely a YouTube fan. People of all ages loved it when it came out, which is crazy because it was never meant to be a toy at all. It's a spring. 
It was originally designed to stabilize sensitive nautical devices on ships. Nothing fun about that at all. Until that amazing day when one of them fell off a table and danced its way into our hearts. After many experiments, the new and improved Slinky was born. Give that team of scientists a medal! Now that little pocket on your jeans wasn't designed for loose change or keys. It was originally made to store your pocket watch. You don't have a pocket watch? How is that possible? They were all the rage in the 1890s. But that's not all that makes your old pair of jeans interesting. Look around the pocket areas, you'll see rivets sticking out. No, they're not some cool fashion idea from the past. These rivets serve a very crucial role. They help protect the sensitive areas of the jeans that get the most wear and tear. Back in the day, most people wore jeans to do hard manual labor, so they needed to be tough. If those guys back then saw you paying a hundred bucks for a pair of ripped jeans, they'd probably pass out from shock. Now, bubble wrap wasn't invented just to keep your items neatly stored inside packages. It was for epic stress relief. Oh, and one other thing. Apparently, someone thought their house would look awesome with three-dimensional wallpaper. They were going to plaster painted bubble wrap all over the walls. It didn't work, so they tried selling it as greenhouse insulation. That failed too. But they nailed it on the third try. Small bubbles, big bubbles. Hey, what's your favorite? After downing a whole thing of mac and cheese, you've got to clean your teeth. It's a rule. Off you go to grab your blue toothbrush from the bathroom. Up and down, circles, rinse. Hey, good job! Now, how about a bit of mouthwash to keep your breath fresh? That mouthwash you're searching for wasn't always mouthwash. It used to be an antiseptic. You know, the type of thing doctors and nurses use to keep their hands bacteria-free? Mmm, minty! Mouthwash was also used as a floor cleaner and a cure for bad diseases. It was even marketed as a hair tonic. Hey, next time I clean my house and find myself out of cleaning products, I might just pop a few lidfuls of mouthwash into the bucket. (laughs) Play-Doh. Yeah, you love it. I mean, it does whatever you want it to. Stretch it, sculpt it into a dinosaur, make the world's longest blue pasta type thing. Just don't chuck it at the walls. Unless… Yep, Play-Doh was initially supposed to be a wallpaper cleaner. And it wasn't until 20 years later that it became the clay we all love to squeeze into weird shapes. It was a popular way of getting all that soot off your wallpaper. Everyone was using coal to heat their houses back then. Rings are big business. People wear them for loads of different reasons. You even get one when you win a Super Bowl. Yippee! Back in the day, though, rings weren't just for show. Archers used to wear them to protect their fingers from their bowstrings, and people doing needlework used them to make sure they didn't hurt themselves, all while looking extra stylish. Egyptians used them as seals, a personal ring signature. You walk into your very nice Egyptian office thousands of years ago. Everything's made of gold for some reason. Your boss walks in, sign this please, and all you do is place a bit of wax on the paper and press your ring on it. Sweet! Great idea! What if you lose your ring, though? Along with Play-Doh, everyone loves a slinky, especially when it's in a YouTube video with some funky music in the background. They were actually invented by accident. Back in the 1900s, an engineer was working hard at his desk to find a way to keep sensitive nautical equipment steady while the boat was swishing around all over the place. Instead, he came up with a fantastic toy. Find a treadmill, put a slinky on it, thank me later. Don't know where to store your freshly baked pie? Place it on a frisbee, if you want the chef to scream at you. In 1871, when frisbees first came to be, that's exactly what they were used for, to serve pies. Here you go, your strawberry pie on a frisbee tin. College students came up with a much better use for them, though. Can you do the thing where you throw it upside down? When you go to bed, you expect your pillow to be as soft as cotton, or maybe you prefer it a bit stiffer. The first pillows, however, weren't fluffy-wuffy soft. They were as hard as stone, because, you know, they were literally made out of stone. They were designed to lift your head off the ground and stop little critters from crawling all over us. They eventually turned soft, thankfully. I don't think my neck could handle a stone pillow right now. I'm sore just thinking about it. Hey, if you're anything like me, hey, aren't you glad you're not? You probably can't walk for even a few seconds in heels without falling over. I think even standing up might be a problem. 
Back in the 16th century, Persian soldiers used high heels to get more accuracy from their bows while on horseback. It helped them get that little bit taller. T-shirt. Now, why is that called a t-shirt? Come on, people. Well, they didn't used to call them that. These classics used to be standard-issue undershirts for the Navy. Back then, about 100 years ago, the word t-shirt wasn't even in the dictionary. Back in ancient Egypt, some people walked around with eye shadow. Now, you might think they were really ahead of the game when it came to fashion. That might be true, but mostly, they put it on to protect their eyes from the glare of the raging hot desert sun. No aviators back then. It was also used as a part of some ceremonies. We don't really know what they were doing or why, but for sure, they look good. Can't wait to see someone skiing down a hill with a face full of eyeshadow. Okay, you're having memory problems. No worries, we've all been there. Where? I forget. Go to your drawer and grab a stack of, yeah, those thingies, post-its. Now, write yourself a note. I'm almost out of post-its. Ooh, very efficient. They were invented by accident by a scientist who was researching different glues. While he was trying out different mixtures, he discovered a special recipe for a glue that only stuck very lightly to most surfaces. He was actually trying to do the opposite, find the recipe for the biggest, baddest glue ever. One that could hold up framed paintings. Still, I'd argue that post-its are probably way better than an adhesive that strong. A Kleenex comes in handy anywhere, especially if you just bit into a hot dog and mustard is oozing all over your hands. They weren't originally thought to be multi-purpose. They were originally invented to be a cold cream remover. What a weird specific use. Over the years, people started using them for anything and everything they could think of, especially as a disposable handkerchief. When their marketing team took notice of this, they rebranded them into what we know and love Kleenex tissues. How generic! You're trying to blend in and look cool at a restaurant, and you spill your drink all over the tablecloth. Uh-oh, you were originally going to order water, but the waitress convinced you to order their new cherry-infused something or other that's going to stain like crazy. Well, not to worry, cellophane was designed to tackle this exact issue. The idea was to wrap the tablecloth with it, and then any and all spills could be wiped clean. It didn't quite work out, but instead we found a great new purpose for it. Storing food, and it does the job perfectly. Plus, it's great for the odd prank now and then. You know what I mean. You know pom-poms on caps? If you've ever wondered what those are for, they're just decorative. Still, sailors used to use them a bit differently. They use them as sort of antennas, the way animals do to sense if an object is too close to them. Insects have them. Cats and other small mammals use their long whiskers to test if they can squeeze into a tight spot. And humans have pom-poms. Thanks to them, no more bumps on the head. The small square patches on a lot of backpacks nowadays are mostly decorative. Still, they used to be nice little gadgets for outdoorsy people. They used to tie extra equipment onto those squares, or use them to tie their muddy sneakers onto. They might have lost their usage over the years, but they kept their funny name. You can call them lash tabs or pig snouts. A good pair of sunglasses completes any outfit. They're not just for show, a lot of professionals rely on them. Professional drivers, pilots, construction workers, they all use them to make their jobs safer. About a thousand years ago, judges used to wear them. Picture this, you're in a 12th century trial. Wonder how the judge is going to rule on this one. You try really hard to guess what the judge is thinking, but you can't. The judge has sunglasses on, the perfect way to hide your face while you interrogate someone. Next time you're getting ready for work, take a closer look at your go-to shirt. Every buttonhole is stitched vertically, but check out the very last hole. It's stitched horizontally, right? This is because the bottom part of your shirt endures the most stress from pulling, as it's where your hips are. So that horizontal buttonhole isn't a mistake, it's put there to stop your shirt ripping as your hips move. That layer of bubbles that forms when you add bubble bath to your tub isn't just for fun. The bubbly layer also acts as insulation and keeps your bath warmer for longer. The pom-pom on top of your beanie wasn't put there as a fashion accessory. The pom-pom was originally added to the hat to prevent sailors banging their heads on the ceilings of the ships that were too low. 
crackers have holes in them to stop them cracking and breaking during baking. If the holes weren't there, steam would build up inside the cracker and make it collapse. Those numbers on stickers they put on oranges aren't random. If there are four digits and the first is three or four, this means the fruit has been made with conventional farming techniques. Five numbers beginning with an eight means the fruit has been genetically modified. Five numbers beginning with a nine means the fruit is organic. Margins on paper aren't for writing in dates and numbering lists. They were originally added to serve a protective function. Back in the day, rats used to be a pesky problem in people's homes, and paper was one of their favorite snacks. Margins were added as a safeguard, so that the rats would nibble on blank paper rather than taking a bite out of your important work. If you put your Chinese takeout on a plate when it arrives, you're doing more work than you should. Much like the paper condiment pots in fast food restaurants, your cardboard Chinese takeout box can be unfolded to create the perfect size plate for your food. The long neck on your soda bottle is designed like that to encourage you to hold it there. That way, the heat from your hand will only warm that top bit of the bottle instead of heating up your whole drink. Why does a lapel have a buttonhole with no matching button? Originally, coats and jackets did have a corresponding button so that the wearer could turn up the collar and fasten it around the neck to keep warm. Over time, people stopped doing this, and the button was removed. But many suitmakers still keep the non-functioning traditional buttonhole. It's always hard to see your food in the microwave because of that pesky black grate on the window. But it's there to stop harmful microwaves escaping called the Faraday Shield. It protects you as well as ensures that your food cooks properly. That random diamond on your backpack is called a lash tab or pig snout. It's there so you can thread cords through the holes to carry extra gear. Perfect for camping or long hikes. Golf balls are covered in dimples, rather than being perfectly round, so that the ball can fly through the air more smoothly, decreasing the drag and allowing it to travel further and faster. Your makeup pads have two different sides for a reason. The bumpy side is used for applying makeup, while the flat side is for removing it. Donuts have holes so that the inside and outside cook evenly. Before the holes were added, the inside would often be greasy and doughy, while the outside was crisp. Your Apple laptop charger has tiny legs that can be folded out, and they're not there so your charger can stand up. These legs, when unfolded, allow you to wrap the cable around and then clamp it into place, securing it and preventing the cable getting tangled or damaged. Now take a look at a soda bottle, and you'll notice a disc inside the bottle cap. This helps seal in the liquid and the drink's fizz, stopping it from going flat. That hole in your hollow lollipop stick isn't to prevent choking, should it ever be swallowed. It's actually there to keep the candy in place. Excess candy flows into the hollow tube and the hole, which, when it hardens, keeps the pop in place. If it was a smooth stick, the candy would slide off easily. The zipper on leather biker jackets is often sewn diagonally. It's not just a fashion statement. Zips that are stitched vertically can bunch up if the wearer leans forward, but a diagonal zipper won't. That little triangle on your gas gauge is there to let you know which side of the car your gas cap is on. Now, you'll never pull up to the wrong side of the pump in a rental car again. Vacuums come with so many attachments, but do any of us really know what that one with long bristles is for? It's for dusting and is perfect for cleaning framed art, blinds, and lampshades. Those tiny holes in the chocolate box tray actually serve a function. Push the hole near the candy and it'll pop straight out with you having to get your hands dirty. How thoughtful! Some skyscrapers have hollow floors that can contain nothing but an elevator. It's actually a way to get around height limits. Some skyscrapers are given a limit to the number of floors they can have. Because the hollow floors are empty, they add to the height of the building and make it look more impressive without increasing the number of floors and breaking the building contract. These hollow floors also help to prevent the spread of fires. Women's shirt buttons are traditionally on the left for a reason. Back in the day, it was a sign of wealth, as it signified that a chambermaid had dressed you, as having the buttons on the left made it easier for them to do up the shirt. Your cuticles serve a purpose, so think before you get rid of them. The small area of skin is there to protect your nails from infection. 
Without it, bacteria and fungi can get in. What's the difference between a wooden hanger and a plastic one? Aside from helping keep your clothes in shape, cedar wood hangers also repel moths and bugs. If you look closely at an elevator door, you'll notice a tiny hole. This is actually a keyhole used for emergencies or for routine maintenance checks. Those random buttons dotted across your jeans are called rivets and are placed in the weakest spots of the jeans to protect them from ripping due to strain or movement. The Statue of Liberty's crown has seven points for a reason. They represent the seven seas and seven continents and were added so that she could extend her freedom to everyone on Earth. Suitcases often come with two zippers so that you can connect them with a padlock to prevent theft. Salt isn't just used for cooking. It can get rid of tough smells. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. If you're in a hurry to get somewhere, but your phone is low on charge, switch it to airplane mode while it's plugged in. It'll charge much faster. Men's shirts have a loop on the back so that they can be hung on a hook in a dressing room or a locker room without creasing. Vaseline has a hidden purpose. It's great for removing scuffs from patent leather shoes. It'll also shine them. Trunks have an emergency latch if you ever accidentally lock yourself in, like I do. Don't ask me why. If you fumble around to locate it, all you have to do is pull on it and the trunk should open. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. Take a look at your laptop keyboard. There are bumps on the F and J keys, but nowhere else. When your fingers are in the optimal typing position, your index finger should rest on these two keys. The bumps have been added so that you can correctly position your hands for typing without looking at your keyboard. If you happen to be missing your index fingers, perhaps from feeding sharks a little too closely, then you're out of luck. Pouring milk into your tea or coffee can make a mess if you don't do it the right way. If you want to pour it with the opening closer to the cup, stop right there, turn it to the other side, and then pour. The flow will be much smoother this way, and you won't have to deal with wiping the table afterwards. Hey, I'm bossy, get over it. <laughs> it's all about the physics of it. If you turn the carton's opening toward the cup, and the carton is full, while the milk's escaping through the opening, the air from the outside will try to get inside the carton to fill the empty space. Since there's only one place where it can do that, the air will push the milk back and disrupt the flow. When you turn the carton to the other side, there will be empty space along with the top side of the carton and the air will have it easier getting inside. So the flow will be steady and you won't have that annoying spurting anymore. Now, the handrails are usually moving faster than the escalator itself because the gear wheels that drive the handrails are intentionally made a bit larger than required. The rubber on those wheels tends to wear off with time, so if the handrails are moving at the same speed as the steps, or even slower, then you're riding a rather old escalator. Now speaking of escalators, and I was, at subway stations with three or more of them, the majority will be going in a different direction depending on the time of day. For example, in the city center, there will be two or more escalators going up in the morning and down in the evening, and vice versa at the outskirts. This is done to make it easier for passengers to get around. Most people only work downtown while living far from the center. So they go to work in the morning and find more escalators moving in the direction they need. How convenient! If you were ever worried about how the pilots find their way in the dark when landing at night, well, you can rest easy now. There's an incredibly complex illumination system on the ground that helps the crew navigate the airplane. And it's not just the red and white lights along the runway. The lights actually start popping up long before the runway, so that the pilots can easily find their way. And different patterns mean different things, which your captain and their co-pilot know by heart. Every commercial airplane you've been on has only one wing. The first airplanes were called biplanes because they had two wings, one on the top and the other going through the bottom of the fuselage. They were connected with struts and wires, which made kind of a box that basically allowed the craft not to fall apart in the air. 
how thoughtful. It was necessary at lower speeds than earlier planes could only muster, but as the engines increased in power, the second wing became redundant and repetitive. The single wing still serves as a support for the whole structure, though. Going 100 miles an hour on an interstate makes you feel the drive and excitement of speed. Flying at nearly 600 miles per hour makes you drowsy at best. This is because you don't feel the actual speed of anything. You can only see how fast you're moving relative to other objects. The closer, the faster. In a car, everything's close to you. So you see trees, people, houses, witches, porcupines, and other cars zapping past you. On board a plane, everything's so far away that it seems to go at a snail's pace. Now take a good look at your smartphone. It might never have occurred to you, but its rectangular shape is no accident. And it's actually what you want it to be. Rectangle is the most convenient shape for a screen. It has an orientation, so you can flip your phone all you want and it will adapt. Imagine that with, say, a round-shaped display, you'd have to always turn it in your hands until the top is where it belongs. Oy. Next, it fits into your pocket nice and cozy. The pocket is deeper than it is wide, so a phone longer than it is broad will sit there perfectly. A square or circular phone will be more of an inconvenience. Then again, a rectangle is much easier to handle. It fits in your palm, and it feels better than a circle or a square. And finally, we're used to having rectangular things all around us. Pictures, sheets of paper, books, SpongeBob, photographs. Having round-shaped screens would have been just weird. Still, there have been attempts to create circular and square smartphones, but as you can guess, they didn't catch on. Taking photos in the dark with a flash, you must have noticed your smartphone flashes several times before making the actual shot. Remember those horrid red eyes in old photographs made on film or digital cameras? That happened exactly because the camera flashed only once. In the dark, the pupils of your eyes become larger, trying to catch more light to see better. And when they reflect the camera's flash, the red eye effect appears. With smartphones, the first short flash makes the pupils contract from bright light, and only then the device takes a shot, and you don't resemble a horror movie creature anymore. Oh. There are two main reasons why there are no public bathrooms in the subway. Safety and financing. They're ridiculously expensive to maintain, so I guess we won't be seeing many of such cabins where they weren't before. And the second reason is security concern. Since there can be no cameras installed in the bathroom, and any kind of suspicious activity would go unnoticed. It seems only natural that a vehicle that carries so much more people than a car should have seatbelts. But buses have none, even school ones. In fact, it has to do with several things at once. First of all, in case of emergency, passengers need to get off a bus as fast as possible. With seatbelts on, they'll waste precious time on unbuckling them. Secondly, a bus is a big and heavy vehicle. On the road, there are not many other members of the traffic that weigh more than a public bus. So in case of a collision, a bus would stop much slower than a car. And even though its passengers will certainly feel the impact, they normally won't get hurt as much. That's also the reason why passengers are allowed to ride standing, too. If your hotel has card keys with magnetic strips, Make sure you put your card key apart from your cell phone and wallet. The problem is that card keys are rewritten quite a lot, and they're designed for that process to be quick and easy. So, a fairly strong magnet like the one in your cell phone can erase your key card, and you won't be able to get back inside your room. The hotel will surely provide you with a new card, but that's still inconvenient. If you're struggling to get your taco shells to stay in place, Use a muffin tray. Flip the tray upside down, spray it with oil, and place your tortillas in the gap. Cook them for around 10 minutes at 700 degrees for the perfect crispy taco shell. Mm, now I'm getting hungry. You? Looking for a lost earring or pin on the floor? Place a stocking over the end of your vacuum and move it over the floor. The small object will get picked up without getting vacuumed. It helps to turn the vacuum on while attempting this. 
Candle wax that's been spilled on furniture can be removed with ice cubes. Rather than ruining the finish by trying to scrape it off, fill a plastic bag with ice and let it sit on the wax for a few minutes. The wax will then cool and harden, making it much easier to pick off. Crayon marks on the walls are a parent's worst nightmare, but you can use a hairdryer to get them off. Heat the marks for just a few seconds to soften the wax, and then you should be able to just wipe it away. You can use hair conditioner to make that new wool sweater less itchy. Just soak it in lukewarm water with a couple of tablespoons of conditioner and leave it for 15 minutes. Then just dry it and your sweater will be much softer. That layer of bubbles that forms when you add bubble bath to your tub isn't just for fun. The bubbly layer also acts as insulation and keeps your bath warmer for longer. Next time you're getting ready for work, take a closer look at your go-to shirt. Every buttonhole is stitched vertically. But check out the very last hole. It's stitched horizontally, right? This is because the bottom part of your shirt endures the most stress from pulling, as it's where your hips are. So that horizontal buttonhole isn't a mistake. It's put there to stop your shirt ripping as your hips move. Hey, those hips don't lie. That random diamond on your backpack is called a lash tab or pig snap. It's there so you can thread cords through the holes to carry extra gear. Perfect for camping or long hikes. If you put your Chinese takeout on a plate when it arrives, you're doing more work than you should. Much like the paper condiment pots in fast food restaurants, your cardboard Chinese takeout box can be unfolded to create the perfect size plate for your food. That hole in your hollow lollipop stick isn't to prevent choking should it ever be swallowed. It's actually there to keep the candy in place. Excess candy flows into the hollow tube and the hole, which, when it hardens, keeps the pop in place. If it was a smooth stick, the candy would slide off easily. Some skyscrapers have hollow floors that contain nothing but an elevator and some complex machinery. They're called technical floors, and developers say they're there to maintain the building's proper functioning. But it's also a way to get around height limits. Some skyscrapers are given a limit to the number of floors they can have. Because the technical floors are non-residential, they add to the height of the building and make it look more impressive without increasing the number of floors and breaking the building contract. These floors can also help to prevent the spread of fires. If you look closely at an elevator door, you'll notice a tiny hole. This is actually a keyhole used for emergencies or for routine maintenance checks. If you get stuck in an elevator, the technician will be able to get you out of there by using their master key. Salt isn't just used for cooking. It can get rid of tough smells, like this. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. Now, take a look at your laptop keyboard. There are bumps on the F and J keys, but nowhere else. When your fingers are in the optimal typing position, your index finger should rest on these two keys. The bumps have been added so that you can correctly position your hands for typing without looking at your keyboard. Washing your clothes on a low heat or even better, a cold wash, will make them last twice as long. Drying them on a line, if possible, will also make the material last longer than if you used a dryer. The less you wash them, the less they'll fade and shrink over time. It'll also save you on your energy bills. Blank pages in the books aren't actually made for the author's signature. It's all about the manufacturing process. Books are printed on large sheets, So one sheet can fit four printed pages. If a book has an odd quantity of printed pages, chances are you'll get a blank one for notes. Tree cart loops have more functions than you think. You don't want to put your fancy white jacket in a cart next to carrots and coke. This little hook-like thingy helps organize all the stuff in your cart better, so you can enjoy your shopping trip. Eh, Works for me. A good doorknob is one made of brass, bronze, or some copper alloys. These metals have an anti-germ effect. Bacteria spread way slower on them. They also get rid of germs pretty fast, within a couple of hours. There's only one way you can store your peanut butter right. If you place it the regular way, 
it may get a bit solid before long. The trick is to store it upside down, so the oils don't stay on the bottom all the time and distribute evenly. Hmm, my dog loves peanut butter. How about yours? Whatever coffee shop you go to, all the disposable cups look exactly the same, only the logo changes. The secret here is the special shape that lets you enjoy your drink easily. The top is always wider, which allows it to accommodate your nose while you're drinking. And the bottom is always narrower, so that anyone can hold it easier, even if the hand is quite small. This width difference also allows the cups to stack. Spoiled milk emits gases, like most foods when they go bad. Or me! A classic plastic milk jug has a concave shape on one side. So when the gases expand inside the jug, it expands too, and the concave shape curves out. Also, if you want to save some milk for later and freeze it, the jug will expand when the milk gets solid as well, occupying more space in a jug. Almost all measuring tapes have a metal tip with a small slot on the end. You can use this slot to hang the tape on a nail or a screw to make measurements without anyone's help. Sometimes this tip has a row of sharp points along the edge on one side. It comes in handy when you want to leave a mark without using a pencil. If you've ever tried a Nintendo cartridge to taste, <laughs> you'll confirm that they taste revolting, leaving a sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. Well, we tried to tell you. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, one of the most disgusting flavors known. Not normally seen in ice cream stores either. Actually, this taste has a righteous function. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Rough edges on the dimes aren't just about design. The coins used to be made of precious metals to show their real value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaven coins with the same value and melt the edges to new coins. To avoid it, minters added that pattern so people could tell if someone cut that coin before. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Lemons get juicier if you warm them up a little bit in the microwave. The heat softens the frozen membranes, so the juice can flow out freely. The result? More lemonade for you! The expiration date on mineral water isn't about water going bad. Actually, no water can spoil, but the <laughs> bottle can. Over time, it starts leaking some chemicals that aren't quite safe. Okay, here's a science project to try. Tonic water can be fluorescent in UV black light. It contains quinine, which makes it both bitter and glowing. The color of plates and cups can affect your food perception. A group of 57 volunteers drank hot chocolate out of different cups, but most people claim the orange cup hot chocolate was the best. Red color plates are cool for those on a diet. It looks alarming, so you end up eating less. Okay, I'm gonna go do the tonic water black light thing. Bye! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends.